The last major section in the evaluation of the, for a central nervous system lesion is evaluating the spinal cord. Evaluation of the integrity of the spinal cord requires evaluating the descending spinal tracts or motor pathways and the ascending spinal tracts or sensory pathways. There are essentially two descending tracts which a clinician should be familiar with. The first is the cortical spinal or pyramidal tract and the second is the extrapyramidal. Lesions of either of these two tracts produce an upper motor neuron lesion and present with the signs discussed previously in this tape. Let's talk about how to evaluate the cortical spinal tract. This is done by performing the pathological reflexes. First, the Babinski reflex or the plantar stimulation reflex, and secondly, the Hoffman reflex. The way we evaluate for the Babinski reflex is by taking our Taylor hammer or a blunt instrument, raising the leg, and stroking the heel of the foot towards the ball of the foot in a circular fashion. Let's do it one more time. We start at the heel along the lateral foot, stroking towards the center of the foot, ball of foot. And you see how the toes curl? That means the toes are down going to plantar stimulation, which is a normal reflex. Let's do the other side. Start with the heel, push hard across the lateral and towards the ball of the foot. You see the toes curl? That's a normal Babinski reflex. The abnormal plantar stimulation reflex or Babinski reflex would be extensor of the hallucis longus and fanning of the other toes. So the extensor muscle would contract bringing up the big toe. The second pathological reflex that is checked for evaluating for a pyramidal tract lesion is the Hoffman. Hoffman is checked by flicking the middle finger of the hand with your thumb and looking for a pincer activity of the thumb and index finger. If the thumb and index finger twitch together, that's an abnormal response and indicates a pyramidal tract lesion primarily isolated in the cervical spine area. Let's do it one more time. Just flick the middle finger and as you can see there's no activity here of these of the thumb and the index finger. If they come together, that's an abnormal finding indicating a pyramidal tract lesion within the cervical spine. Now let's look at the ascending tracts of the spinal cord. There are primarily two ascending or sensory tracts which the clinician should be familiar with. These tracts include the spinal thalamic tract, which is, includes the lateral and ventral portion, and the posterior columns. In evaluating the lateral spinal thalamic tract, we're looking for sensations of pain and temperature. Pain is evaluated by pricking the patient with a pin and seeing if it hurts. So we're going to check this patient for pain. Do you feel that? Yeah. Feels good and sharp? Yeah. You don't like that? I don't like it. Okay. Or we could check by checking the patient's a response to hot or cold where we'd put hot water or cold water in a test tube and apply it to the patient's skin and see if they felt it. The ventral spinal thalamic tract is, carries the sensation of light touch. Again, light touch can be performed by rubbing the back of the fingers across the hand, asking the patient if they feel it. Yeah. We should never use the uh, palmar surface of the hands because we'll stroke too strongly. Or we can use our friendly troll and stroke to see if the patient feels this. Do you feel this? Yeah. As we discussed earlier, other ways of checking for light touch is by taking the tip of a cotton swab and checking for light touch in that manner or using a ball of cotton, pulling it off. So we've got some cotton fibers checking for light touch this way. So we are checking for a sensation of light touch or transmission of this light touch through the ventral spinal thalamic tract. The other ascending tract we want to evaluate is the posterior columns. The posterior columns are the fasciculus gracilis and fasciculus cuneatus. The posterior columns transmit the sensations of vibration, deep pressure, position sense, two-point discrimination, and warm and cool. Let's talk about proprioception or position sense. In evaluating for position sense, we can start with the foot. We put our fingers on the side of the joint instead of on the top. And we ask the patient to close their eyes and tell us where the toe is in space. 
Now I'm going to move the toe down and ask the patient to say, where is this toe in space? Down. Down. Now I'm going to move it again and see what they say. Now let's look at vibration. Vibration is carried in the posterior columns, and we check vibration. We use a 128C vibration tuning fork. And we ask the patient to lie down, face up with your head here and your feet down here. And we essentially check three areas. We check the medial malleolus, the ASIS, and the clavicle. Now I start with the medial malleolus and ask the patient to close their eyes and do you feel this? Yeah. Let's do it on the other side. Do you feel this? Yeah. Now if they feel this, you don't need to go to the ASIS or the clavicle because we've checked the projection all the way up the spine. If they cannot feel it over the ASI, over the medial malleolus, we're going to check it over the ASIS or anterior superior iliac spine. Do you feel this? Yeah. And you feel this. Yep. And let's do the clavicle. Feel this? Yep. And here. Yep. Now what we've checked, would you say that for me please, Deb, is vibration or projection of vibration through the posterior columns. Now I want to check two-point discrimination. In two-point discrimination, we're determining how far or how close a patient can feel two objects placed on the skin at the same time. So, we're going to turn the palm up, and I'm going to place this on your palm, and you tell me if you feel one or two points being placed on you. All right? Close your eyes, please. Now, tell me, Deb, do you feel one or two? One. Now, see, I'm doing one first to make sure I've got the patient giving me a proper response. Now, we're going to try two and see what happens. Feel that? Yeah. One or two? Two. And I'm going to keep going closer. Do you feel that? Yeah. One or two? One. One. Now, I've got two on her hand. I'm going to measure that and see if it's within normal limits or not. We have covered a lot of steps in evaluating the descending and ascending tracks of the spinal cord. A quick screening procedure would be to perform Babinski or plantar stimulation and also pinprick for lateral spinal thalamic tract and light touch for ventral spinal thalamic tract. If you choose to do the other neurological testing, it would be indicated in your uh, history portion. But to screen, I think all you need to do is perform plantar stimulation and light touch and pinprick.